Lately, it seems cows can't catch a break. They're often labeled as environmental villains, with claims that livestock farming is one of the biggest contributors to global warming. You've probably heard the arguments, cows are eating up all our food, drinking our water, and burping methane into the atmosphere, making climate change worse. But are we really getting the full picture? Today, we'll dive deep into the controversial debate around cattle farming, beef consumption, and the environment. We'll dissect each argument one by one, peeling back the layers to reveal some surprising truths. From water usage to methane emissions and everything in between, let's explore what's really happening behind these sound bites. Myth 1. Cows are draining all our water. One of the most common claims is that beef production consumes enormous amounts of water, up to 660 gallons for a single hamburger. At first glance, this sounds alarming, but where does this number actually come from and is it the full story? First, it's important to understand the type of water being counted. Much of the water associated with beef production comes from green water, which is simply rainwater that would fall on the land whether cattle were there or not. This rain feeds the grass that cows graze on, and most of it is part of the natural water cycle. When cows drink water, it doesn't just disappear, the majority of it returns to the ecosystem through the cow's urine and feces, replenishing soil and plants. So, while the water is consumed, it's not permanently removed from the system. Now, while beef does use more water than some crops like rice or wheat, let's compare it to other foods. For example, producing a quarter pound of almonds uses over 1,000 liters of water, almost 10 times more than beef. And yet, almonds are often celebrated as a healthy, environmentally friendly snack. So is it fair to single out cows when it comes to water consumption? In fact, a large part of the concern isn't with beef's water footprint, but with how we use our freshwater resources. Globally, about 70% of all freshwater goes toward irrigating crops. And in places like California, water-intensive crops like almonds, rice, and cotton consume massive amounts of water. In some cases, like with almonds, 94% of the water usage is not from rainwater but from irrigation, drawing down critical freshwater reserves. So, if we're going to talk about water, we need to consider a much broader picture that goes beyond just livestock. Myth 2. Cows are eating all our food. Another claim is that livestock farming wastes food that could be used to feed humans. The argument suggests that if we stopped feeding animals and started consuming crops directly, we could feed billions of additional people. This is often presented in shocking terms, like the claim that it takes 25 kilograms of grain to produce just one kilogram of beef. However, this oversimplified view misses a key point. The vast majority of what cows eat is not food that humans can consume. In fact, 84% of the food that livestock consume globally is inedible by humans. This includes things like grass, crop residues and byproducts from food production such as almond hulls and soybean skins. For example, cows can be fed leftover husks from corn and almond production, waste products that we can't eat. In Japan, dairy cows are fed with leftover soybean skins from the country's high soy consumption, making use of agricultural byproducts that would otherwise be wasted. In fact, for every 100 pounds of food produced for humans from crops, about 37 pounds of inedible byproducts are created. Livestock take these human inedible byproducts and convert them into high-quality proteins such as meat and dairy. So when people claim that we are wasting food on cattle, they're ignoring the fact that cows are recycling products that would otherwise be thrown away. Instead of seeing livestock as food competitors, we should view them as part of an efficient system that makes use of byproducts and helps minimize waste. Myth 3. Cows take all our land. It's true that livestock farming uses a lot of land, but not all land is created equal. About two-thirds of the world's agricultural land is what's known as marginal meaning it's unsuitable for growing crops due to poor soil quality, rocky terrain, or lack of water. This land isn't good for farming, but it's perfect for grazing animals like cows, sheep, and goats. These animals can turn grass and other inedible plants into food for humans. Without ruminants, this marginal land would go to waste, producing no food at all. Ruminants like cows have a unique ability to digest cellulose in plants that humans can't eat, converting it into protein and other nutrients. So while it's tempting to think that all the land used for livestock could be repurposed for human crops, the reality is that much of it wouldn't be suitable for farming. In fact, in the United States where beef production is highly efficient, cattle farming uses land that wouldn't otherwise contribute to food production. 
this means livestock are essential for making use of land that would otherwise be non-productive. Myth 4. Cows are polluting the air with methane. Methane from cows is often considered one of the most harmful greenhouse gases because it traps heat much more effectively than carbon dioxide. This leads to the argument that cows' methane emissions are a major contributor to global warming. But once again, the full story is a bit more complicated. Methane is potent, but it also has a much shorter lifespan in the atmosphere compared to CO2. Methane breaks down after about 10, 12 years while CO2 can linger for centuries. More importantly, methane from cows is part of a natural cycle. Grass absorbs CO2 from the air, cows eat the grass and the methane they release eventually converts back into CO2 and water. In the US, methane emissions from cows account for only about 2.7% of total greenhouse gases, and that's from all livestock, not just cows. Additionally, a 2011 study found that hundreds of years ago, wild bison and other large herbivores roamed the plains of North America, producing methane at levels nearly equivalent to today's farmed livestock. So, methane from ruminants is not a new phenomenon, it's part of a natural, long-standing cycle. Compare this to fossil fuels, where we extract carbon that's been locked away for millions of years and release it into the atmosphere. This adds new carbon to the system unlike methane which is recycled through the natural carbon cycle. The real issue, fossil fuels and food waste. When we talk about reducing greenhouse gases, focusing solely on cows distracts from the bigger issue. Livestock accounts for a relatively small share of emissions, especially in developed countries like the US. The real problem lies with fossil fuels, which make up around 80% of global emissions. It's our reliance on oil, coal and gas that's driving the bulk of climate change. Additionally, food waste is a massive and often overlooked issue. The Food and Agriculture Organization FAO, estimates that a staggering one-third of all food produced globally ends up being wasted. In the US nearly 40% of all food is thrown away, and it's not just meat. Fruits, vegetables and grains make up the majority of this waste. Imagine the resources, water, energy and labor that go into producing this food only for it to be discarded. Interestingly, animal agriculture can be part of the solution here. Surplus or damaged crops, bakery waste and even food waste from supermarkets can be repurposed as feed for livestock, reducing overall food waste. Conclusion A balanced perspective on cows and climate change. So, are cows really the environmental villains they're made out to be? The truth is more nuanced. Yes, livestock farming does have an environmental impact, but it's not nearly as catastrophic as some claim. Cows play a valuable role in our food system by using marginal land, recycling agricultural waste, and contributing natural fertilizers. While methane emissions are a concern, they are part of a natural cycle and represent a small fraction of overall greenhouse gases. If we're serious about tackling climate change, the most impactful actions we can take involve reducing our reliance on fossil fuels and cutting down on food waste. Instead of focusing on demonizing cows, let's focus on the real drivers of global warming and work toward more sustainable solutions.